Bonjour, everybody. Hi, this is Neshi Lokatz. Welcome to Star Nation's radio network uh, right here on Facebook with live stream shows. You're watching uh, Communications from Home. And uh, it is Tuesday night, July 24th, 2018. <laughs> I always have to throw the year in there every once in a while, you know, because sometimes we forget. <laughs> We get uh, we get going on so much, and we just uh, kind of space that part out. Hello, Jill Conrad. So glad you could join me this evening. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You know, it's a. Uh, I did a live stream earlier today. Um, I do one every morning, practically, and uh, my my camera worked just fine for the earlier video. Um, and tonight, I don't know. Camera's not working. The good camera. So we're, we're we're using the laptop camera, and I hope you guys that you have a good, uh, Im, you know, the the video image. I hope that's good. I know that my lighting kind of kind of goes in and out with this one, so I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've used the laptop camera, um, <clears throat> so we're we're just gonna go with it. You know, we're gonna be doing this really really good meditation. This meditation, called the Unity Breath Meditation, is a guided meditation. And um, I do this at least once a month here on this uh, live stream show. It's usually on the last Thursday of the month. Um, but we moved it up a week because my guest next week is Minnie Kansman. And she is in Great Lakes Retreat teaching. And she's also one of the lecture speakers. And so um, she said yes to the show, but we have to do it next week. And why are we doing a show with Minnie Kansman is because she's starting her brand new column in the Star Nations magazine. And we want to get the backstory on that one, don't we? Hello, Robin. Hello, hello. So glad you're, you're here with us. Um, for those that are in the live chat, if you could do me a favor, you know, this is part of the, uh, the stuff that we do right away and during the sh in the front part of the show so that we can um, share and like the show, right? And the reason why we ask you to do the sharing is because, well, Facebook likes that stuff. And so, <laughs> and so when we share it, people can find us so much easier because we end up in the, the news feed more often. And, um, and you know, do you, do you remember what it was like when you first started out consciously on your, your spiritual path? Um, and you were looking for information. And most of us were voracious readers, you know, anything we could get our hands on to read. Um, that was us. And, um, and any kind of video, you know, YouTube video we were watching. And so um, this by helping us to share, we're helping other people to find us so much easier. And so I am doing the same thing. I've got my phone. So I'm liking and I'm sharing. And I'm going to share it to my timeline first. First. There we go. And we're going to say, um, I'm live streaming. I show. And we're going to ask him to please join us. There we go. And make sure everything's spelled right. Because, you know, when you're using your phone, sometimes, you know, those buttons are kind of small. And I end up misspelling something. Thank you, Jill, for sharing. I appreciate that. And Christine, my sister is in the house. <laughs> Hello, Christine. Connie's here, too. And she shared. Thank you so much, ladies. I appreciate that. And um, I just did it too to my timeline. And I think um, I think I'm going to send it over to the Star Nations Radio Network closed group. That's where most of the um, Star Nations community hangs out. So I am going to do that. Um, let's see. I'm going to go to a group. And we're going to go to the network group. And I'm just going to say... Um, I'm live streaming the show and then join us. Okay. There. Everything's spelled right. That's good. Excellent. There we go. So <clears throat> this meditation called the unity breath. I learned this meditation years ago. Um, I want to say it was probably early 2000s. 
And um, it was right around the same time that I um, started studying the Merkaba and uh, sacred geometry. Um, I had finished, <laughs> I had finished Drenvalo Melchizedek's um, book, um, The Flower of the Ancient Secrets of the Flower of Life, Volume Two. Volume Two basically fell off the shelf. Um, I was reaching up. I was looking at the the, the larger size books at uh, Barn. Was it Barnes and Noble? No, it was Borders in Madison, on the east side. And um, I was looking. I was looking for a book and any book really. <laughs> I really, all I wanted to do was just to go in there because I felt like I had to be there, right? And so I went to the bookshelf where these books were at, and I'm looking, I'm looking. And the volume, volume two is kind of a, a shimmery kind of purple color. And um, it was in the, the larger books shelf. So I reached up to grab it, and I pulled it out. When I pulled it out, it literally fell out and um, landed on the floor. And when it landed on the floor, it landed it landed um, cover up and on the cover is the flower of life. And I have to say that it went right to my right straight to my heart. And I, so I picked up the book and I knew that I'd be taking that book home with me. Right. And I did, I read it mind blowing stuff. Right. <laughs> so, and I was, um, I had finished making a, it, they've got a pattern in the back of the book to make a star tetrahedron. And I must have struggled with that for at least three days, trying to get it to work, trying, and I couldn't get it to work. And I've even, I even asked my guides, please show me how to do this. And one night I was, I was falling asleep and I could see the, the edges folding. And so I got out of bed and went downstairs and I threw the directions out and just followed what my, my team had showed me. And sure enough, it worked, right? So I was all happy about it. Of course, Paul's sleeping. Nobody to tell. <laughs> and so I get back into bed and I'm, you know, I'm thinking, no, oh, I should go study with somebody. And I never even looked up, never even Googled any of um, the information in Wisconsin. So the next morning I did. And I found Maureen St. Germain. And she was in Sun Prairie, which is um, from where I lived in Poinette. It was probably a half hour drive. Right? So I took that information away and I went to work. That evening, a good friend of mine called me, Tammy. Tammy called me and asked me, would I like to go to a um, winter solstice gathering? Sure. Where? And she says, Ed. <laughs> at um at St. Germain's house. It's like really like in Sun Prairie. She goes, "Yeah, in Sun Prairie. Do you know her?" And I said, "No, I don't. I never met her." And so anyway, we went. We went to this this uh solstice party. And we get there. And there's a lot of cars, there's a lot of people there. And as I walked in walked up to the front door, um and somebody opened it and it was somebody that I knew from my state job. Somebody that um, I didn't had no idea that they had an interest in the Merkaba or sacred geometry or anything spiritual for that matter. Well, it turns out that I knew a lot of people there. <laughs> and um, so anyway, we walked in and uh, I met with with uh, with her and it, that started my path. Um, I, so I studied with her to um, activate my Merkaba. And in those days, we had to do the old uh, way of um, activating and, um, and to, to, for it to go permanent. It could take anywhere from a couple, uh, at least 90 days, 90 days to, you know, however long it took to, to activate. And so you had to do the meditation every day, every day. You had to do all the mudras all the mudras to um, to keep your Merkaba up. And um, we learned from that, um, I want to say it was in 2012, is when I, I learned the, the upgraded, the 2.0 way. The old way was through your, through your mind, through your mind that you activated your Merkaba. And we started calling it the, the synthetic Merkaba. And we learned how to activate the Merkaba um, through our heart chakra, through our heart. 
And, um, and that's what we call the natural Merkaba. And this unity breath meditation um, went along with the activation of the Merkaba. Once we did the meditation with all the mudras, um, at the very end, uh, we would slide right into the unity breath meditation, right? And so um, it felt good. The first time I did this meditation, it felt so good. Why? Is because you're raising your vibration to love. And when you're doing it with a group of people, um, that vibrational field, that frequency field is tenfold. It reaches so far out, right? And so <clears throat> this ancient meditation um, is about the frequency of love. And indigenous people all over the world, all over the world, um, have known this frequency, this vibration, and they share it, right? And really what it is, is our connection to Grandmother Earth and Grandfather Sky and how much they love us. And, and our, we sending our love to them. And it is an energy field that, um, and I say it's indigenous people, but you know, if we go all, if we go far enough back, um, we are, we all come from a tribal nation no matter what continent that your, your people are from. And um, your, your indigenous roots, wherever that is, um, they also knew this. And so we carry it, we carry it in our bones, in our blood, in our DNA, it's cellular memory. And that's why when I first, when I first uh, experienced this meditation, it felt really, really good. Uh, it was a memory, a memory that came back and I teach it. I've been teaching it for many years. And we just started doing this on the live stream show. Mm, I think it's been probably a good maybe four or five months, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Christine's saying love synchronicity. I know, you know, that's the that's our guides, our, our spiritual team helping us, right? Helping us. And uh, those books, when they fly off the shelf like that, um, that, that wasn't the only time that ever happened to me. <laughs> I've had books land right on my foot. It's like, you know, they're really going to get your attention, right? So there's a couple things in this meditation that I would like to um, show you so that you have an idea of um, parts of the meditation if you've never done this meditation before. And there is one piece that is, we'll be using what we have is called a crystalline tube. And this crystalline tube runs right straight through the center of us from uh, just above our crown chakra by hand and just below our feet chakra by hand. Um, it runs right straight through us. It's also known as the pranic tube. And this tube is where um, the universal energy flows through us constantly, all the time. It is a gentle flow of the universal energy through us, up through the, the bottom and down through the top of the tube. And where, where um, we notice it the most is when it, when, it, when it passes by in our upper heart chakra, so the upper heart chakra. And this crystalline tube is about the, the, the size of the diameter of your wrist. If you, if you put your hands... <laughs> with the camera here like this. So, you know, it's about this, mine is about this wide, about. Um, and so, and that runs right straight through the middle of us, right? Straight through the center. Some people would call it a heart, would know it as the hara line. If you study the chakras, you would know it as the hara line. So I'm going to show you this picture. I love this picture. This is, I think this is a, a great um image of how the universal energy from above runs through us, right straight through the center. And I, and I love that color blue. Okay, and here is an image that um, these are energy fields that are created, created by um, our heart. And this is, um, this is a science actually. And uh, it's called a toric field. 
And a toric field is, if you look down and look down on it, it would look like um, a donut, okay? And so <clears throat> as the universal energy runs through us, um, it, 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 act, uh, it activates with our heart energy. And that larger field, the larger one, is that universal energy flowing through and um, creating that toric field. Okay. And the smaller one is generated by our heart. That smaller toric field. And we have this around us all the time. You know, it's whether we're consciously aware of it or not, it's always there. I, I literally, you know, when you think about, um, th this is about our Merkaba. And they say that when you have an activated permanent Merkaba, it has enough energy that actually can can uh, run a, a small town. I think they say it's like 15,000 uh, 15, people, um, city, small town. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the science behind it. Hello, Rochelle. And our bodies uh, replicate Grandmother Earth. And this is a, a photo or an image of, of the universal energy flowing through Grandmother Earth. And she too has generates a toric field. And you can see that larger one right around her. It's kind of a little bit of a shadow image. But this is the uh, universal energy flowing through Grandmother Earth, creating that toric field, right straight through her center. And her heart is the one that is also generating that heart field. It's pretty, isn't it? But I wanted to share that with you because in the meditation, I will be referring to uh, the pranic tube. And here's a good picture um, for those who know about chakras or study chakras. This is the pranic tube, also known as the Hara line. So, you know, we're, we're kind of talking about the same thing, right? Right. Um, oh, there's one more thing. Is <clears throat> in the meditation, I'll be asking you to bring to you images. And we know that um, the images come from the right brain, the right side of your brain. Language and even the written word come from our left brain. And so when we're working with imagery, we're actually working with um, that part of our, our mental mind. And with our mental mind, and it's okay to use your imagination here, it really is, is to, to remember um, images, places that you've been in nature, when we ask you for um, images of Grandmother Earth, someplace that you really, really love, when you use those images um, is to make them as real as possible for yourself and to feel the feelings when you were there. And most people, um, when they use a, an image from nature, um, you, can, you can feel how you react to that those special places that you've been, um, it always makes you either feel really happy, um, you have that feeling of, I just love this place, it's gorgeous here, look at that view, you, you get the idea, right? So you can use your imagination as much as you want, as much as you want to make it real for you. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, synchronicity was, was an album. Yes, it's true. <laughs> and the same goes for Grandfather Sky. Okay, so you bring to your, yourself those images that you just love about the sky, anything about the sky, and using your imagination, making it as real as possible for yourself, putting yourself right back into a, a time when maybe you were looking up at the stars or the moon or something like that, and remembering those feelings that you had during that time frame, okay? And then I'm going to be asking you to, um, to bring to you uh, either a sunrise or a sunset. And so here is just an image. I thought this was beautiful. You, you can use your own imagery for the sunset or the sunrise, as long as you make it real for yourself, that you remember how you felt in that moment when you were looking at that sunrise or that sunset. Okay. All right. 
All right. So, <clears throat> and when we do these kind of meditations, you know, what I found, especially at the end of the day, end of a work day, sometimes we need just a little bit of help just to um, bring ourselves, pull ourselves together, so to speak, to pull, to bring all those aspects of ourselves to the present moment. All right. And so we're going to do just a little bit of a relaxation to get you um, in an energy field of relaxation so that when you start you, the imagery, um, it will be easier for you to connect to that. All right. Okay, so get comfortable. Um, as long as you can hear my voice, you don't necessarily have to watch the screen because I won't be showing any imagery or anything like that. Um, be using my voice. Um, so if you want, you can even lay down. As long as you can hear me, that's great. Um, if you're sitting on the floor, it's okay to be like in a lotus position. Um, what we want you to do is not to have your, your legs or your arms crossed. Uh, because that that closes the circuit. Okay, we want to be an open circuit. So, especially um, when we have a habit of crossing our legs if we're sitting in a chair. Yeah, you want both feet flat on the floor if you're sitting in a chair, and your spine as straight as you possibly can. So you may have to put some pillows behind you to get into that position. Okay, we want you to be comfortable but we want your spine as straight as possible. Why? Is because we're, we're, we're actually turning our attention to our crystalline tube, all right? So I'll just give you a, a couple of uh, seconds here, you know, like five seconds. Five seconds is actually a very long time, <laughs> especially when you're trying to fill it. Um, so I'll give you a little time to get situated. Some people like to take off their jewelry, their glasses to be able to get comfortable, all right? Okay. While you're doing that, I'm going to take a drink of water. All right. Now, for those people who have studied with me, if you have your, um, your mindfold mask available, you can use that. It's not necessary, but if you want to, you can go ahead and do that. <clears throat> so getting comfortable and closing your eyes and we're going to do just some um, relaxation and bringing bringing you to the present moment and uh, using your body to do that okay all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a big deep breath in so really fill up your lungs and then really blow out the the exhale okay so here we go Really filling up your lungs and then exhaling. <sighs> really blowing it out. Good. That's really good. Okay. Now we're going to do that one more time, okay? Big deep breath in, really filling up your lungs, and on the exhale, blowing it out. Good. <clears throat> now just breathing easy and naturally. You can feel your muscles beginning to, to relax even now after those two big breaths. And just noticing, you know, where you're sitting or lying, sitting on the chair, just noticing it. Or if you're lying on the floor, feeling the floor beneath you. Good. All right. And so now I would like you to turn your attention and notice your feet. Just notice how they feel. And now noticing your calf muscles. Noticing how those muscles feel. Good. And now noticing your knees. And noticing your thigh muscles. 
Noticing how they feel, those large muscles, how they're feeling. Just noticing. And now notice your hips. Notice how your hips feel. Good. And now taking a nice, easy, deep breath in. And on the exhale, you can feel your feet relaxing and your legs and your knees. Noticing your thigh muscles relaxing and your hips relaxing. Good. And now turning your attention to your stomach muscles. Notice how these muscles feel. Noticing your diaphragm. and the muscles across your chest. Just notice how they feel. Taking a nice, easy, deep breath in. And on the exhale, you can feel your muscles relaxing. <sighs> relaxing. Good. And now turning your attention, notice your lower back. Notice those muscles. Notice how they feel. And now noticing your mid back and your shoulder blades. Notice the tops of your shoulders. Notice how those muscles feel. Taking a nice, easy, deep breath in. And as you exhale, you can feel your back muscles relaxing. Smoothing out. and letting go. Good. And now noticing your fingers. Noticing your hands. Notice the muscles in your forearms. Noticing your elbows. And now notice the muscles in your upper arms. Notice how they feel. Taking a nice, easy, deep breath in. And as you exhale, you can feel your hands and your arms relaxing. Relaxing. It feels good.
And now turning your attention to your neck muscles. Notice how they feel. And now notice your jaw. And it's okay if you want to just drop your jaw just a little bit. And noticing the muscles around your eyes. Noticing your forehead and your ears. Taking a nice, easy, deep breath in. And as you exhale, you can feel these muscles relaxing. Relaxing. With every sound that you hear and with every breath that you take, you just feel more and more relaxed. More and more relaxed. It's good. Now in your imagination, imagine being surrounded by a white light. bathed in it, surrounded by it. This is the creator's protection. It's good. In a moment, I'm going to be asking you to take another deep breath in. But on this breath, what I'd like you to do on the exhale is to see a white mist coming from your mouth. Okay? Good. All right. Now, taking a big, deep breath in, really filling up your lungs from the bottom to the top. And when you get to the top, is hold your breath just for a second and then exhale and see the white mist coming from your mouth. That's good, just breathing easy and naturally now. We're going to do that one more time. Big, deep breath in. And at the top of that breath, holding it just for a second. And on the release, seeing a white mist coming from your mouth. Very good. Just breathing easy and naturally now. I'd like you to turn your attention to your crystalline tube, to your pranic tube. Sensing, feeling, seeing, universal energy flowing through your pranic tube. Noticing how it feels in that gentle flow 
coming down through the top and up through the bottom. Just noticing it. And know that we are all breathing the same universal energy. As it's flowing through our pranic tube, we're sharing this. Now just taking a nice, easy, deep breath in. And on the exhale, bring to you those images that you just love and appreciate about Grandmother Earth. You may have a special place in nature that you just love to go to, to love to visit there. and bringing this image to you. Notice how you feel about this place. Noticing the color of the trees or the grass. Perhaps it's by a lake. Notice the aromas here. Perhaps you're amongst the pines and you can smell the pine. It's so beautiful here your special place. Noticing the flowers. Perhaps your love for nature includes a pet. And if you want to bring that image of your pet to you, noticing their fur, their eyes, Noticing how you feel about the special being in your life. Perhaps the special being is a child, a grandchild, a niece or a nephew. and bring an image of them to you. Perhaps when they were a small child, when they would sit in your lap or give you one of those hugs that only small children can do. And notice how you feel about this child. It's all about the love we have for Grandmother Earth. And now gather, gathering all of that love that you have for Grandmother Earth. Gathering it. And in your imagination, 
Place all the love that you have for Grandmother Earth into a beautiful crystal. And with your intention, send this gift of love down to Grandmother Earth's heart, down to her core, this gift of love. Sensing, feeling, seeing Grandmother Earth's love coming to you. Notice how her love feels surrounding you, flowing through you. Notice where you feel it in your physical body, her love for you. Taking a nice, easy, deep breath in. And as you exhale, turning your attention to a night sky. And bringing to you all of those images that you just love and appreciate about grandfather sky. Bringing those images of a starry, starry night. Perhaps gazing up at the moon in all her fullness. Could be feeling the sun, its warmth on your skin. Or it's a rainbow. First time you ever saw a sun dog. Seeing lightning or hearing the rumbling of thunder. Just notice how you feel about these beautiful moments with Grandfather Guy. In your imagination, Imagine gathering all of the love that you have for Grandfather Sky. And placing your love in a beautiful crystal.
and with your intention, sending this gift of love up to the sun. Sensing, feeling, seeing, Grandfather Sky's love for you coming to you. Noticing what it feels like to be surrounded, to be filled with Grandfather Sky's love. And where do you feel this in your body? His love for you. Just notice how it feels. Take in a nice, easy, deep breath in. And as you exhale, bring to you images of a sunrise or a sunset. Noticing the colors of the sky. How in the moment that the sun either sinks below the horizon or above the horizon, how it becomes quiet and silent for just a moment. and how the birds and tree frogs, crickets, how they sound in that twilight. This is how Grandfather Sky loves Grandmother Earth. this precious love that we get to see twice a day, they show us how much they love each other. And how much they love us. As you have this image of the sunrise or sunset, notice how it feels in your body your feelings about the sunrise or sunset. This gorgeous, gorgeous time of day. And now turning your attention to the feeling of love from Grandmother Earth and Grandfather Sky as it surrounds you, bathing you in their love. The love for their divine child. The divine mother the Divine Father, and you, their Divine Child, creating the Holy Trinity right here on Earth. Remembering the love that they have for us, 
raises our vibration, our frequency to the frequency of love. Taking a nice, easy, deep breath in. And as you exhale, thanking Grandmother Earth and Grandfather Sky and coming back to the present moment, the present time we call now, back to our live stream. Back, oops, sorry, back to your body. You can stretch and wiggle your fingers and your toes. But you're coming back to the present time. And when that feels complete for you, you can open your eyes. And if you have your mindful masks on, you can take those off. And if um, you could please let me know by commenting um, that you're back. So I know that everyone is back in their bodies and have returned. All right, as I take a drink of water. Thank you, Jill, for letting me know that you're back and you loved it. I tell you what, that was some an intense love vibration that was going on. Um, certainly could feel it. That is for sure. You guys did really well with that imagery, too. Um, if you'd like to share a bit. Rochelle says, I'm going to listen to this tomorrow. Fantastic meditation. Thank you, Rochelle. And Robin is back. Thank you. Christine says, that was wonderful. Thank you. you know, I forget I'm using Be Live. Our partner's at Be Live. I can actually show, show you your comments. <laughs> it's just not a regular a live stream show. And Rochelle, there we go. Good, excellent, you guys. Um, if you want to share a little bit about, um, I'm always interested in the imagery um, because the the more we can connect to the imagery and feel the feelings, the emotions around it um, helps us to create that uh, frequency, that vibration of love. Um, so how many people in the chat felt grandmother, the grandmother's love? Um, when you sent her your love, and then I asked you to sense and feel her love coming to you, um, if you don't mind sharing, if you felt it, one, and two, um, what was it like for you? You know, that would be helpful. For other people. In the same way for Grandfather Sky, sometimes Grandfather Sky is a little bit more, um, it takes a little bit more to get there. Because, you know, we spend so much time, uh, when we hike, we go out in nature, we go for walks, you know, we're surrounded by nature all day long. And we are a part of nature, we're not separate from it. So that's why we bring in our, our animal furry friends, our four-legged relatives, uh, we bring in children, um, people that we love. And she, Jill is saying, yes, and it's still flowing. Good. And, you know, because if you notice, you know, that a lot of meditations, uh, when they're guided, they bring you back, back, you know. And with this particular meditation, yes, we ask you to come back, but you're still in that frequency. You're still in that vibration of love. You came back with it. So um, what you can do is you can... Just notice, notice how long it lasts with you, how long you hold that vibrational field, okay? And, and you can see, you can actually feel it kind of dissipating and you can always check to see, oh, that was, you know, an hour, that was three hours, that was, you know, four or five hours, that kind of thing. Um, and just notice because the more often you do this meditation, um, 
we remember how to hold that frequency for longer periods of time. Yeah. Yeah. Connie. Connie is saying, back, what a trip. <laughs> I saw a friend who passed three years ago. Aw, that's good. You got to see them for a little bit, huh? Excellent. Thank you for sharing that, Connie. <clears throat> Christina says, yes, I felt both Mother Earth and Grandfather Sky. It's tingly and warm, like going home, full acceptance. I know that, you know, for some people, that might be the first time they felt um, what unconditional love could feel like, right? Because their love for us has no condition, none at all. And the difference between feeling that and human love is, is much different. We can still feel it, but it's not quite the same. Um, there's absolutely nothing that we have to do to feel the love of Grandfather Earth, uh, Grandfather Sky and Grandmother Earth. Nothing. All we have to do is turn our attention to them and it's there. Um, and interesting, how many people saw Grandmother Earth's love in a color, as a color, because it was interesting. Because um, when I sense her and her love for me, um, I always um, get this kind of emerald green kind of color, kind of shimmery. And um, I also hear her say to me, um, my child or my divine child. She always says that to me. And so um, I was just wondering, because that, that green was more intense tonight. And so I was wondering maybe if there was somebody else. Yeah, Jill, she saw green too. Because it felt like, um, it felt more more intense, more vivid. That's a better word for it, vivid tonight. And so I was wondering if there was others who had seen a similar color or sensed it, is what I should say, sensed it. Yeah, because you don't necessarily have to see it. Um, that's why I use those words, sensing, feeling, seeing, um, because we all take bring in energy, that information differently. And so um, there's no right and no wrong, as long as you can, you can sense it. All right. Well, uh, notice how long you, you hold the vibration. And um, you can do this anytime, anytime. Um, all you have to do is kind of um, bring yourself back to your body, back to the present moment, and um, bring an image to you of Grandmother Earth, something that you just really love, and send her love to down to her. And the same for Grandfather Sky. And then imagine that sunrise or sunset. And you're there. You're there. The more often you do it, the 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 um, easier it is to to bring those images to you and to feel that vibration, that frequency. I used to. She kind of is saying she saw a color of at the sunset. Oh yeah, the yellow orange color. Yes, yes. And the the um, at those sunsets, did you ever notice that the or that orange color? Is there's that word again? Vivid. It's much more. Um, I don't know that burnt orangey kind of color. And in the mornings, it's not quite as vivid, not quite as intense. It's still beautiful, um, but it's not quite the same. It's a little bit more more subtle as as the sun is starting to rise. Yeah, and that time of day, <clears throat> literally when the sun breaks the horizon or just sets below the horizon, um, it, it's that moment of, it's just real still and quiet, just for a moment, you know? I love that. Robin is saying, going to listen again when there are less distractions. <laughs> yep, that, that works too. That works too. You know, and uh, Robin, um, it, probably by tomorrow, I'm going to cross my fingers. I'm having a little technical difficulty with an app that I use to have the shows um, uploaded as audios to SoundCloud because we have a um, an account there for Star Nation's organization. Um, I think is it or maybe it's Star Nation's Radio Network is what it's under. 
I can get the link and post it. Um, and the, so the the videos are are converted into audios, and so you can download them as an audio, which takes less bandwidth than than a video. You know, so those are available. Um, <clears throat> but that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just don't do it while you're driving. Yeah, that's not a good idea while you're driving. There's, uh, I'm going to put this one picture back up. This one. Um, <clears throat> so the more often that you can do the meditation, whether, you know, when you do it as a full blown meditation, um, or if you're standing in a grocery line or uh, waiting on the phone, if you're on hold, those are the times when I practice. Um, or when I'm waiting for the water to boil for the, the cup of tea, you know, um, it just takes a moment and to be able to do that. I also do it in the morning. Um, sometimes our, our mornings here are kind of hectic, you know, and before I do the card draw, <clears throat> I like to, to get centered and grounded. Um, and sometimes I need to do a little bit more. And so then I sit down and do this meditation bringing those images to me. It doesn't, I don't do the full blown meditation. I just bring the images to me and I can feel the, I can feel the energy field of love. Right. And then I, then I do the card draw much, much easier. <laughs> and I get to be in that frequency for, for a longer period of time too. Yeah. So I'm so glad you guys are with me tonight. I appreciate it. Um, I hope this has been helpful to you because let me tell you, you know, when we do this meditation together, we, that energy field that we create on the frequency of love makes a difference. It makes a difference. It's um, a gift that we give to ourselves, but we also um, give the gift to humanity. We give the gift to all of creation, really. Um, when we raise, when we raise the frequency to love and, uh, so, and the longer you can hold it there, the better, right? Right. So, <clears throat> sorry, with that, um, next, uh, next up is tomorrow night is, um, Polly Joe soul connections. And, um, if you are a healer or a, a light worker, energy worker of any kind and have not taken time to take care of yourself, and do your own healing work. Um, Wednesday night is a good time to do that. Uh, Polly Joe creates the sacred space, holds that for us, helps us to do whatever releasing we need to do. And uh, that's on at 8 p.m. Uh, no, I'm sorry, 7 p.m. Eastern. And then on Thursday, Thursday is um, Spiritual Mysteries of Life with Connie Cher Vodder, Constant Vodder. Yes. One of our elders. Thursday has become the um, elder day here at Star Nations. Connie kicks it off in the morning at uh, 1030 Eastern for her show. Um, and it's always fun. I, I love listening to our elders. And especially when Connie, when Connie brings in spirit and uh, some people would call it channeling. Um, but when she she's bringing in that message for us, it's usually pretty good. And uh, in the evening at 8 p.m. Eastern is the Mystery School with uh, Orchard and Carl Franklin. Um, and I produce their show. And so some, you know, a lot of times I'm right there with them on camera. Um, and we're going to be talking about um, spiritual freedom and how um, belief systems, most times religious belief systems, um, can be an interference to our spiritual freedom. And so we're going to be talking about that. It's going to be a good one. So hopefully you guys can join us. Enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll see you next week for communications from home. And my guest will be Minnie Kansman and her brand new <coughs> column in the Star Nations magazine, uh, Nature Adventures. Okay. Good night, everybody. And enjoy the rest of your evening.